Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today I'm going to be showing you this RC car and how it works. So recently I was asked by my school's RC team to build them an RC car that can not that can autonomously navigate a track. Now, as part of their competition, they have to build a car that does this. And because none of the people on the team actually knew how to build something like this, they called on me to help build it for them. So what I did is I built this RC car, or modified it, with an Arduino circuit board, so that way it can use the inputs from these four distance sensors to control the output to the electronic speed controller and the steering servo. This was all done using a uh, circuit board and Arduino stuff, and it works really good. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this and how the program works. Let's get started. So let's start by taking a look at the car. So this is just a typical RC car chassis that was pretty stock. And what I did is I first took a piece of plexiglass and I mounted it to this center aluminum frame. Now this plexiglass has standoffs for the first Arduino circuit board to stand on. It also has standoffs for the second piece of plexiglass that holds all the other sensors. These type of sensors are ultrasonic distance sensors, and you can learn how those work in one of my previous videos. But these are all mounted with one screw to this piece of plexiglass so that way they can be freely rotated. Because the angle of these ultrasonic distance sensors makes a very large difference in how it navigates this track. I forgot to mention, the track this will be autonomously navigating is a track that has a 4x8 square in the middle, and it is surrounded by an oval on the outside that is about 15x8. And so this car will have to navigate the walls inside this track without hitting any of the walls to get the most points. And you can see it driving in one of my previous videos. But anyway, back to the point. So this circuit board is made on a piece of perf board, and that everything is modular and connected on it. So this car uses four ultrasonic distance sensors to autonomously navigate this track. Now, this whole thing is controlled by this Arduino Nano that is hooked up to this piece of perf board and has all these other connections on it. Now this whole circuit board is modular. This means that anything, including this Arduino, can be easily removed to see the female headers that are beneath. Also, these wires can be easily unplugged, so that way you can plug in different things or remove the circuit board easily. These wires go to the different ultrasonic sensors, ESC and servo. So I'll plug that back in. And as you can see, the Bluetooth module is also modular, which means it can be unplugged. So all these parts interact to form this RC car that is actually able to autonomously navigate a track. This circuit board was soldered on the bottom with different solder connections. Now, I didn't actually take a video of what it looked like while I was soldering it, but you can see a picture of what the circuit board looks like underneath in this picture. So this part right here is the electronic speed controller, or ESC, and this is what drives the high current motor from the battery. Now this ESC needs a certain pulse width modulation signal. And so this wire from the ESC goes into this port right here that goes into the Arduino. And the Arduino, if it supplies a pulse width modulation of 80, causes the ESC to not move at all. If it supplies anything higher than 89, then the motor will move forward. If it supplies anything less than 75, the motor will move backwards. The servo also works using kind of the same concept, where 95 makes the wheels go forward, Anything below that makes them turn right, and anything above it makes them turn left. Now all these connections are connected to the Arduino. The far piece of wire right here is ground. The second one in is positive, or VCC. And then the ones going in after that are the control pins to the Arduino. For the servo and ESC, these two pins right here are the signal pins. And for the four ultrasonic distance sensors, these two pins are trigger first and then echo. And those are connected to the respective pins on the Arduino underneath. Bluetooth module's TX is connected to the Arduino's RX, while the Bluetooth module's RX is connected to the Arduino's TX. So, now how this car works when it's actually inside its track. How the code 
uses the distances from these different sensors to help maneuver the car. So what happens is it kind of uses a servoing motion. So first of all, the code scans through every single distance sensor, respectively, finding each distance about every 10 microseconds. So they have an extremely fast refresh rate. Now what happens is if the car gets too close to the wall with this sensor, which is beneath a certain set point of the code, then it'll turn this way. Now, after it gets far enough away, it'll set back. But if it gets too close on any of these other sensors, it'll turn the other way. So each sensor is working individually in a way, so that way, if it gets too close to the wall on one side, it'll turn. If it gets too close on the other side, it'll turn. Now this forward sensor is kind of a backup, a failsafe. So what happens is if this sensor gets too close to a wall, the car will immediately back up and turn so that way it avoids hitting that wall, if that ever happens. So this whole code is actually quite complicated because there are a lot of nested if statements to make these sensors work in the best way possible. And also, all of the values from these sensors took quite a while to find. So in the end result, as you can see when we turn this on, all the sensors will work in such a way, so if I move my hand close to one of them, it'll turn one way and the same with the other way. So this Bluetooth module will turn on the car initially if it receives the command to do so. Now I also added another failsafe, or another easier way to turn it on, where I press this single button. Now when I press this button, the code will enter drive state, which will mean it's driving in its autonomous order, and this blue light in the back will turn on. So I'll press this button, and it takes a little bit to load because I have a delay set inside there. It's approximately 15 seconds. And the car will start running. You will see the blue light come on and you will see it drive forward. <coughs> so as you can see, the car is working right now. <laughs> and it is driving forward and the blue light is on. Now if I move my hand close to a different sensor, you can see that the wheels turn in a different direction. If I move my hand close to any, any one of the sensors, they immediately start moving. And if I move my hand close to this sensor, it turns. So that is how all the sensors work on here, and they actually work very good. So this is the code that I used for the whole Arduino, and I'll put a link to my instructable in the description that will have this code inside it. That, on, that instructable will be up in the next few days. So how this code works is in the top, it initializes all the pins to do the different things that they do, including the Bluetooth module and stuff. And these are all the trigger and echo pins for all the ultrasonic sensors. And these are just some long variables, which are 32-bit. And those have stored the distances and stuff. And these are just more initializations. And then right here is where it scans all the sensors. So it runs a method called sonar sensor, which pings each one and receives the echo for how much the distance was for it. And that sets the distance one to distance. And so then it takes the distances and it gets rid of all the extraneous values right here by setting any extraneous value to zero. And then right here is when it gets the driver state, which means that if the Bluetooth uh, sends a 1 to it, then it will make driver state 1, and if the button is pressed, it'll make driver state 1. Then if it's 0, then nothing happens with the car, and if it's 1, then it runs this code. And this code is all blanked out because this is previous attempts at making the code. And down here is the actual code that makes this car work. Now, as you can see, it is extremely long right here. Now pretty much what it does is it servos between all of the different pins and all of the different um, sensors of the robot to make it work. So for example, if we go down here and we see that if distance 3 is less than 53 and it is not equal to 0, which means that if it is 0 then it is an extraneous value because it's too far, then it will make the RC car drive forward at medium speed. Now there is quite a bit of code here and it would take a long time to explain, so I'll just have you read through it. And so this is a video of it actually running inside the competition. And if you check out my previous video, you can see a whole time lapse kind of of its whole two and a half hour run around this track, which is actually pretty cool.
for now, I'm going to just run the car, not with autonomous, but with my phone, by opening up a new code called Bluetooth car. This will allow me to run the car using my phone as a remote control, which is pretty cool. So let's see that. So now that you've seen what this car looks like when it's driving in the actual track, and it was able to drive in this track for two and a half hours, now we can have a little bit of fun with this car and connect to it using Bluetooth on my phone. So this is an Android app that allows you to send different data packets to the Bluetooth module on the car. So that way I can uh, program the car to drive wherever I want using my phone and with any speed that I want. So as you can see, I can put it on low speed right now and it doesn't even drive forward, it has a dead battery. And that's low speed and I can drive backwards. But as you can see, when I increase it to full speed, it goes super fast. Well, it seems this car has crashed into the bushes because the Bluetooth lost connection. Oh, no, it's going fast. So let's try this again. So as always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to fix this old broken microwave that doesn't start.